Hey you! If you're enjoying Skyline Rem and want to help make it happen, you can apply to join our backstage team in the description of this video. If you don't have the time or means, don't sweat it. Subscribe, leave a like, and enjoy the video instead. Maybe going out for drinks last night wasn't my best idea. My head is still killing me. You said it. I barely showed up for my shift. Hey, did you just hear something? The judge wipes his brow as he drops more files in front of you. Alright, that should do it. So all of these files belong to people from Olden? Yep, Zion confirms. Anyone who came from Olden before applying for Erwin's citizenship is right there in front of you. He brushes his shoulders off. Pretty impressive, eh, Rex? Yes, quite impressive for your secretary to pull these for us, Vincent states. I, I, I mean, geez, someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Zion frowns at him. I don't have time for your attempts to show off, Vincent counters. I have more important business to attend to. But is that any way to thank the Grand Judge for his benevolence? Let alone a good friend of your older brother? Vincent narrows his eyes, unamused. T -t Thanks, Zion. You're welcome, Rex. <laughs> the judge nods at you while giving a mischievous smirk at Vincent. At least someone around here knows how to use their words. In response, Vincent rolls his eyes. Fine. Thank you, Zion, for performing the bare minimum. As usual. Ouch. Zion blinks at him. He leans over to whisper to you. What's his problem? He's just stressed about all this London stuff. Sheesh. Zion places his hands behind his head. That guy's been stressed about something every day of his life. Just chill out and take it day by day. It'll work itself out. With all due respect, Grand Judge. Vincent grits his teeth. A priestess's life is at stake. I wouldn't take things so lightly if I were you. I'll let you and Arden worry about that. I'm sure you got it under control. <laughs> no biggie. That's exactly why I'm stressed. But uh, hey, these files aren't gonna uh, 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 file themselves. You try to distract the two and place yourself between them. Why don't we focus on our work down here, and you go back to Hydra's castle to, uh, d do whatever you gotta do, you suggest to Zion. 
Actually, I've got some other business to attend uh, upstairs. Zion sighs. I'll be hanging out up there if you need anything else. Alright, uh, you got it. And thanks for letting us use your office. Don't mention it, Rex. Zion winks at you. Holler if you need anything, yeah? Get out. You're distracting me. D uh, see you around! What a nice guy. <sighs> so we five Jeez, where did I even start here? Uh, maybe that one? That one's too thick. Maybe that- No, that's even thicker. Wait, what's the smallest one? You walk around the desk to look over the files in front of Vincent. You pick up a random one and read it out loud. <coughs> Let's see. Rachel West. You hold up the file. You think that could be our assassin? Don't be ridiculous. Vincent shakes his head. <sighs> Okay, what exactly are we looking for in these files? Anything suspicious? Any citizen could have originated from Olden, but that doesn't make them a suspect. Okay. And, uh, anything suspicious means... What? Something that stands out as abnormal. He answers again vaguely. Okay, that really doesn't give me much to work with. I don't know, Rex! Just look for anything weird and quit bugging me! I don't know what to look for if you don't tell me! You put your hands up in defense. Instant groans. Ugh. I don't mean to snap. I'm on edge. That's all. Yeah, obviously. There's a lot of material to go through. Vincent shuffles through numerous files. I'm not sure if what we're looking... I'm not sure what we're looking for either. I'm... Playing it by ear as we go. He leans forward. <sighs> I spent all night trying to think of a plan, but nothing came to me. Without some type of lead, we can't even use the information you found about the assassin to our advantage. Mm. Guess there are more people from Olden in the city than I thought. <laughs> we don't call Arrow in the city of acceptance for nothing. <laughs> no matter what your background is, you're welcomed into the kingdom. Yeah, that level of acceptance just makes our job more difficult. Obviously, my parents didn't realize something like this would happen. Huh. Uh, what are your parents like? The uh, king and queen? Is now really the time to ask something like this? Do I, I, I don't know. I'm not doing anything besides like staring at a bunch of files. Plus, I'm curious. He stares at you for a moment before sighing. Ugh. You're a ridiculous fixer. You know that, right? So I've been told. Vincent leans back in his chair. My parents are... Fine. They're just rulers who care for this kingdom. He flips through a couple more files casually. Of course, ruling over Erwin keeps you busy. Not to mention, they have to tutor my older brother on how to be king once my father gets too old to continue his reign. And then there's my younger sister. It's always such a handful. He pauses in his narration. And? What else? He shakes his head. I don't know. There's not much else to say. They're like any other parent. Only they happen to be royalty. He looks back down at the files. Now, enough with your stupid questions. Alright, alright, fine. You look over a couple of files, too, and toss them aside. Vincent groans. When is your friend getting here, Lily? Uh, uh, I'm not... Sure. I thought I told her a meeting over half an hour ago. <laughs> Leave it to your friends to be tardy. I'm sure she'll be here any minute. Then the only thing we can do is wait. 
Here, try looking over these files for anything interesting. He hands you a large stack of files, which causes you to stumble for a moment. I'll keep looking in this larger pile for something. All hey, right, hey, 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 hey. Think it through. I'm thinking it through. Think it harder. I'm, I'm, I've, I've, I've thought I've thought this through. Uh, hello? Uh. You step forward and stare down at the silver wing, who crosses his arms and looks away from your harsh gazes meekly. Okay, do you guys have to look at me like that? What, the, what are you doing here? I would have thought you'd never show your face around us again after last time. Okay, I didn't plan to, but I did some thinking. What kind of thinking? Probably the thinking that inspires me to make a bunch of golems to wreck the city for fun. Or maybe the kind of thinking that tells you to steal my coin! What? Vincent raises an eyebrow. Just what exactly is your history with this scrappy plebeian? However, he pauses as he considers Fern for some time. Is this the Silverwing we met outside the Dreamscape? He's rather underwhelming without the mask on, isn't he? Hey! You know, I don't have to give you info. I could just leave. Uh, info. What kind of info? Yeah, that got your attention, didn't it? Who would have guessed? If you have something to say, then say it. We don't have any time for funny business. All right, all right. Listen, after what Lily told me about what's, you know, all going around around here, I did a little digging of my own. I looked into what she said, and I found something. What kind of something? An important something. Okay, do you want to be any more specific? I can't be any more specific. Do you realize how much I'm risking by just being here? I really shouldn't tell you more than that. Oh, <laughs> so you're not telling us. This is so stupid. There are lives on the line here, Fern, and you're still wasting our time. I think I know exactly what's on the line here. All right? I know a lot is riding on this for you, but there's plenty on me too. What do you mean by that? Okay, I shouldn't even be talking to you right now, so consider yourselves lucky that I'm nice enough to be here. He places a hand on his chest. Forgive me if I hold my applause. Vincent narrows his eyes at Fern, unamused. Listen, you gotta believe me. If anyone were to hear this... Fern looks around in a paranoid manner. Just listen, okay, closely. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. We're listening. There's a house off of Southern Main Street. The house number is 113. I would highly suggest that you check it out for no particular reason at all. Subtle. Okay, cut me some slack. I'm giving you a hint here. Rex frowns and considers this information before looking back up at Fern. Why are you helping us? It, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, I can do whatever I want, but I did not sign up for this. And how can we be sure that you're not tricking us? Okay, why would I pull your leg on this? You're a Silverwing, aren't you? I can think of a couple reasons why. Okay, I get that, and I know there's no re re you know, real reason for you to trust me, but I'm serious when I say I am not trying to trick you. Okay, but how do we know that for sure? Okay, I don't know about other silver wings, but I'm not okay with this. An assassin, a plot to get rid of someone. You have to draw the line somewhere, and that's that. And that's my line. It's one thing to mess with someone, but it's another whole thing to hurt someone like this. And I do not want any part of that. This is just to clear my conscience, so now I can say I didn't do nothing. 
you know? That's surprisingly noble. Yeah, well, I like to think I'm full of surprises. I can't stay here much longer, okay? I, I have to go. He turns his back to all of you. Okay, check out the place I told you about if you want a lead. Otherwise, you never saw me. Noted. Vincent says hesitantly before Fern quickly departs. You glance at one another. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Neither did I. And what should we do? Rex and I didn't have much of a plan. And this is the first lead we've gotten. Even if it is from an unreputable source. And that means... It wouldn't hurt to check and see what we could find. <sighs> Curious to know where that Silverwing gave us an address. Come on. I think I know how to get there from here. Alright. Lead the way. He knew something? How did he know something? What do you mean? I mean, he gave us an address for a lead or something, right? It's How... how... When we fought the other day, and at the end, I I just thought maybe he knew about what was going on. Actually, no, I just assumed it, but based on that reaction, he didn't. Huh. Regardless, I don't know if I fully trust him yet. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Yeah. But if he's wasting our time again, I swear. Ugh. One chance. Hmm. Mm, he did look nervous, though. Actually. Yeah, I wonder what he was afraid of. I don't know. I mean, like I know he can in act. Trouble? We've seen it before, but... but I don't what would he get in trouble with? I don't know. Right here? You hmm? walk up to the house behind Vincent. He puts his hands on his hips and frowns. He hums as he stares at the door and the strange armored individuals outside the home. Well, this is it. Who are those guys in the front? Beats me. They look familiar, though. Look at their weapons. Vincent nods the swords at their hips. They're armed. Whoever paid those guards has something to hide. Why would Fern recommend this place? I'm not sure yet. The prince crosses his arms. I'd like to figure that out for myself. Well, whatever the reason was... I guess he wasn't lying about it. Still, you won't know the house is relevant until we investigate. That means getting past those guards. He adjusts the cuffs on his coat. That being said, follow me and let me do all the talking. You think you can get through them? <laughs> of course I can. I'm the Prince of Arrowin, after all. They have to listen to me. Not sure if that's how it works, but all right. <laughs> Vincent huffs as he strides forward confidently towards the guards. You both trail behind him as he walks up to the guards and clears his throat. <clears throat> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Out there, the city's been treating you well. The guards glance at one another and then back at Vincent. Fine enough. Who's asking? What? Vincent scoffs before clearing his throat. My name is Prince Vincent Davenport of the Royal Davenport family. I have reason to believe that this home contains some suspicious items or activities, and I'm going to need you both to step aside. The guards stare at him in shock before snorting and laughing. <laughs> Good one. Uh, he's not joking? Do you refuse to abide by arrow in law? Vincent raises an eyebrow. I'd recommend that you not interfere with my work. We know plenty of your arrow in laws, one of the guards states. 
But we don't have to listen to you, little prince. We got our own royal family to answer to. Your own royal family? Vincent asks in confusion before blinking. Oh, don't tell me. What? What's wrong? You're from Olden, aren't you? Vincent confirms with them. That's right. And we know our rights in your city. Even if you are the prince, you can't just walk into private property. This land was purchased by the kingdom of Olden, and therefore, you have no right of entry without a warrant. One of the guards taps the side of his head. There is a process to this sort of thing. We're not stupid. All right. Then who lives here? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? We don't have to tell you that either. That's personal information. <laughs> then what can we know? Nothing. Now scram. The guards tell your group. We don't have anything more to say to you. Vincent curses under his breath and turns away. <laughs> Fine then. This isn't the last you heard of us. Sure it isn't. The guards roll their eyes as Vincent storms off. Blah, Vincent, come back! Mm. Mm. Dude, you gotta... You fall after Vincent and stand out in the middle of the street. The prince paces back and forth in irritation. The audacity of those guards! Did they seriously just talk to me like that? Uh, looks like it. What are those guys even doing there? Yeah, don't you think it's weird? Fern gives us the address of a house that just happens to be protected by Olden guards? There's an assassin for- And there's an assassin from Olden loose in the city. You think that home belongs to our assassin? Why not? The clues match up. We won't know for sure unless we find a way to get inside. Who knows what's in there? Almost certainly something incriminating. Vincent brings a hand to his chin. You don't have brutes like those two watching your front door unless you have something to hide. <sighs> Still... If they refuse to listen to my authority, then I have no idea how we're going to get past them. Hmm. Maybe it's time to take the more stealthy approach. What's that supposed to mean? If we can't get by the cards directly, we can sneak past them and break in! Piece of cake! Nyx puts his hands on his hips as the prince blinks at him. So you're telling Arrow and Royalty to break of the law? Okay, well when you put it like that, it sounds really bad. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Probably because breaking it is really bad. <sighs> breaking and entering is illegal. We are not doing that. But what if it's the only way? I'm not huge on breaking the law either, but this seems like a situation where it's kind of necessary. There's always another way. I only agreed to work with you travelers so that I could keep you in line and get to the bottom of things legally. That means no breaking in. <sighs> Fine. Think of something else. You're both quiet for a moment as you consider your options. Hmm. Alright, how about this? Since they're from Olden, and we know that Olden is doing some shady stuff in the city, why don't we just throw the book at them? With what evidence? Well, the assassin has a mithril knife. We know that that, they, that has to be from Olden. True. But if we happen to find a mithril knife in that house or on those guards, that doesn't necessarily prove anything. It won't hold up in the court of law because it's entirely plausible for anyone from Olden to carry something mithril on them. We'd have to find the exact same mithril knife the assassin used, or something else incriminating for it to stick. Alright. Then what if we use that information to our advantage? To get in legally? Eh? Huh? Well, if we have reasonable suspicion, then that there might be something related to the assassin in the house, we could try to get a warrant. That way the guards have no choice but to let us search the house for something incriminating. A warrant. It's not a bad idea, actually. Oh! We could talk to Zion about that! He should still be in the courthouse, right? Uh, who? He's like Arden, uh, another star seeker. He's sort of the judge in charge of the court, so if anyone could get us a search warrant, it's him. It's worth a try. Hopefully he's in a productive mood. 
He tosses his cape over his shoulder. Follow me. <sighs> if only could figure out who lived there as well. Yeah. We could check the files. No. That's also not. illegal. No, we have them, but it's what? There are so many of them. It might actually take us whole months. Oh, I mean, I, that's fair. The city is giant. And that was our only plan. We were about to go through every file and comb over it. But it, it's just going to take too much what time. What are you going to be looking for in the files? We didn't know. Oh, that's even worse. Well, okay, we had nothing else. <laughs> I get it. I understand. I do. But we know the assassins like... from Olden, and that's all we have. The next thing was to look at people from Olden, but... Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, people from Olden isn't a... It doesn't narrow it down much. Whoa. Whoa. I've never been in here before. I have. I was legal counsel. What? Zion! You walk into the courtroom and find Zion shuffling through some paperwork at the other end of the room. He has his feet up on the desk before his chair, and he seems bored by the files in front of him. Junk. 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 Ugh. He rolls his eyes and tosses them away. Another boring day. Yo, Zion, do you have a second? Zion instantly pricks up. I stand corrected, he says to himself as he kicks his feet off the desks and strides over to you. He crosses his arms. How's your little investigation going, Rex and company? He's not the leader of this company and you know it, Vincent frowns at Zion. Whatever you say, my prince. <laughs> An investigation's okay, but we need your help. Count me in. Zion flashes you an enth two enthusiastic thumbs up. What do you need me for? Lily steps forward. We need your help to get us a search warrant. I, mean, I was hoping for something a little less official, but I guess I can do that. What do you need it for? There's this house also off of the main street. We think it might have something to do with our investigation. My investigation. Whatever. The guards in the front are from Olden. It could be related to the assassin too, but he won't let us in without a warrant. Zion nods slowly as you explain. Right. Well, I guess I could get something going for you. How's a couple weeks out for the pickup? A couple of weeks?! Surely you can do better than that, Grand Judge. But you're not giving me much to work with. Zion puts his hands up in surrender. How do you know these random olden guards relate to your olden assassin? Well, because we got a tip from Fern, a Silverwing. And we know that Silverwings are somehow involved in this plot, too. They're being paid by someone, possibly the same someone, who's trying to take down London. Which gives us probable cause. Zion raises an eyebrow at your reasoning. So, you're relying on the word of a single guy with questionable credibility? Not to mention, you're assuming that the house belongs to the Olden Assassin because of this one testimony and the existence of guards, even though there are tens of hundreds of Olden citizens now living in Erwin. Okay, I mean, when you put it like that, I... The judge sighs. <sighs> Sorry, but I can't expedite the process based on circumstantial evidence. It'll be three weeks for a warrant. Then what if I personally ask you to speed up the process? Vincent asks. Just because you're a prince doesn't mean I can bend the rules for you whenever it's convenient. Zion crosses his arms. Then I'd have to bend the rules for everyone who comes in here. Well, come on, Zion, we can't wait three weeks. You should have thought of that three weeks ago. My hands are tied in this matter. <laughs> Fine, then. We'll figure it out ourselves. I look forward to seeing you in my courtroom. That could be interesting. <laughs> Not happening. Vincent grits his teeth. Both of you, come on, we're leaving. 
All right. Dang, man. I guess it's the same issue with the files. Yeah. Too many people, it doesn't... I hate me. bureaucracy! Uh. It's poison! <laughs> okay! Whoa! We'll figure something out. Oh, crap. Insect kicks a pebble into the streets of irritation. Of course. <laughs> I should be surprised that Zion wouldn't listen to me. We can be as mad as we want, but he had a point. We don't have any substantial evidence. Maybe we shouldn't have mentioned that Fern was a silver wing. That wouldn't have mattered. He would have known we were hiding something if we didn't tell him the truth. That's the downside of having a conversation with Zion. Okay, well then, what do we do now? We think of something else. It's the only thing we can do. Obviously, I don't plan on waiting three weeks for a warrant. It'll probably be too late by then. Exactly. Breaking in isn't sounding so bad now, is it? No. Forget about it. We're not breaking in. Shoot. Maybe... Don't sound so disappointed. He seems upset enough as it is. Vincent begins to pace back and forth as he considers your options. What if we find a way to appeal to the guards? Possibly. Now would you hope to do something like that? We could try to bribe them. How would you hope to do something like that? In a legal manner. Vincent grits his teeth and repeats his question. Oh, right. Uh, we could try maybe appealing to their sense of camaraderie? Explain. Well, uh, obviously those guards don't like us because we're from Erwin. Maybe if we found someone from Olden, they'd be more willing to negotiate with them. But how are we going to do that? We need someone from Olden, obviously. Native to that kingdom. Lily's eyes light up. Hey, what? I think I have an idea. You do? <laughs> I have a friend who's from Olden. We can ask her for help talking to the guards. Awesome! Let's give it a shot! Who is this friend... Her name is Allison. She's a member of the Gilded Collective. She should be at their guild hall right now. Gilded Collective. Vincent repeats the name slowly. Are you sure about this? Merchants from that guild aren't the helpful type. I'm sure. She'll help me if I ask her to. Okay. Come on. I remember Allison. She uh, ran the stall in that uh, festival, right? Vincent probably remembers that, and I don't think that's the best memory. She's very nice. Very helpful. <laughs> really goes out of her way to help people. What's the... Do you want to cut help, through? I'll, 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 no, we'll go the choice. Let's go in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I decided not to go through a... Uh, Water side. The because... shuffle was a little strange. I mentioned the courtroom to Fenris, and he thought you were in trouble. Like, that was his immediate thought. Well, I've never been in the courtroom on, like, the, the verdict stand. Alright, I gave Ellis yeah. the best legal oh, representation in this country. That answers my question. I was about to say, uh, who in the world would pick you as their counsel? But, oh, I uh, got her out on I community service. I obviously nailed it. I nailed it! Okay. okay. She spent no time in jail. Not did a day. Time? No. Then why did she get community service for something she didn't do? Because of the other stuff she did. What? Well, she, like, fought the Admiral. And also, like, oh. stole from people, and beat up people. And, uh, escaped from- from prison before. Why did we go this way? There was a faster way! I'm sorry! I didn't know there was a faster way!
faster way. Uh, I've always gone this way. Uh, uh, there is a way through Astra Centrum. You think if you lived in this city long enough, you'd know. I don't visit Allison that often. This is honestly really good. She was harping on me about not visiting her. Where did you go? Up here. Where are you going? There's stairs over here. Where are you going? <laughs> I was taking the scenic route. Where are you going? That's not a path. Okay, right, right, right. uh... hey, I'll have you know, I've only gotten lost twice coming this way. I've run from end to end of the city, maybe like once every two weeks for various reasons. Why? I know it like the back of my hand. Why? I'm the fixer! It's my job! That's fair. What do you have to... No, no, I've seen. You fix insane stuff. I fix everything. The other week well, it was someone's toilet. What? Yeah, I, um, I... Yeah. What, you set it on fire? Is that how you fixed it? No, it... I don't want to talk about it. Where, Where did, did you go? go? I get home. Oh, my... I'm going down. Where did you go? All right, we'll see you there. <laughs> okay. Did I somehow take like a, a longer route? I again? guess you did. Are you already there? You keep vanishing. This I'm is like sorry. time number three. I'm just walking. Two, I, I, you are not. I am too. If I get there before you. Uh, Wait, where no. is it again? Guild Collective. We were, oh, that's over this way. We, were, we went in front of it for the uh, festival. Mm-hmm. Am I actually about to get there before you? I'm literally coming up on it right now. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm just walking up the stairs to it. I see it. Clearly, I got here first. So... I see it. Eyes locked. But where are you? you? I'm at the front entrance. Are you going to the side entrance? What side oh, entrance? You... Come up here. The main entrance is over here. What do you mean main entrance? Why are there entrances? I'm pretty sure that's where they bring their stock in. I don't know. Deliveries. Come up here. Well, I'm a delivery. I can go in there. You're not a delivery. You're a person. I'm delivering myself and to I this place. First, so clearly I took the better route. I win. No! <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be Allison. <laughs> Laugh it up. <laughs> ah! It's slipping upstairs. Karma. Alright, where is she? In the closet office. Lily leads you towards the small closet door at the top of the staircase. Vincent raises an eyebrow at the door. Weird time to visit a broom closet, don't you? That's not Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Weird time to make a visit to a broom closet, don't you think, Lily? It's not technically a Ah, you'll see. She knocks on the closet door, and a woman's voice answers moments later. Just a moment. I'm finishing up some important business, and then I'll be right with you. Vincent and Rex glance at one another in confusion before looking back at the door. Eh, give it a second. Moments of awkward silence pass before eventually Allison pokes her head out of her office and glances at you all. Yes, what can I do for you? Make it quick. I have a number of clients to- She pauses, however, when she realizes who you are. Oh, Riley! How kind of you to visit. Hey, Allison. Come now, you can give me a bigger smile than that, right? <laughs> a brown doesn't belong on a cute face like yours. She steps out of the closet and closes the door behind her. It's not every day that you choose to stop by. I was afraid you were forgetting about me. It was the occasion. Uh, actually, we could really use your help with something. Oh, my help. You don't say. Allison glances back at Vincent and Rex. I see you brought those two young men with you. Please tell me they're still fighting. 
I could use their rivalry for my next business demonstration. No, no. Uh, <laughs> they're here for help, too. It's a long story. You're from Olden? Allison puts her hands on her hips. What does that have to do with anything? We could use someone with Olden expertise. There are a couple of guards we need to get out of the way. Lily tries to delicately explain to her. <gasps> that sounds heinous! She frowns slightly. She begins to walk back into her office. Uh, maybe a little, but it's for a good cause. Okay, uh, something big is going down in Erwin, and we need to get to the bottom of it. Well, why don't you just ask Jack for help? I'm sure he'd be more than willing to give up his precious time for something that isn't his problem. Wait, hang on. Isn't Jack... Too busy to help! Yep, <laughs> he is... Busy, that is. Just, please, Allison. Lily steps inside her office to plead with her. We don't have many other options. <laughs> what do I get out of it? What do you want? Vincent looks at his gloved nails. I'm certain that any compensation you require can be provided. Yeah, Vincent's loaded. I meant the kingdom's treasury, not my own wallet! You can't just volunteer my money to a stranger! I suppose... I could use some extra funds to spruce up the place. She motions to her office. As she does this, a couple of floorboards creak above her, and voices are heard bleeding through the walls. You glance at one another hesitantly. Is this really your office? Yes! It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> It's... tiny. It simply needs some proper decor. I haven't had the time to put up some of my best tapestries. I feel like tapestries aren't going to do much to a broom closet. Rex starts to remember before Lily nudges him in the ribs. Ow! So, what do you say? You do this for us and you'll get paid for it? That's well, not the worst deal. I accept. Great! In that case, can we hurry along and get back to the house? We've wasted enough time here. Uh, just follow us, Allison. Told you she's nice and she'll help. All right. I go here first! You! <laughs> you both! I was waiting on the front steps. You're like, oh, well, the entrance. Which, mind you, is like another floor lower, so you'd have to walk up another there flight There was still of another faster way. I was faster than you! Because I got started on your path. Yeah, but you you judged me when I did that. What, what stairs did you go down? Did you come over here? No, you came from over there. What did you do? I went down the side of the mountain. You went the long way. No, not that way. The other way. What do you- I went down the side of the Look, mountain. looky, look. Have you ever been here? Yeah, I- okay, I realized this. This was the optimal way. I get that. I do. <laughs> However, I raise you with the sub- suboptimal way. Off the suboptimal way. I went the optimal off the suboptimal. Alright, clear, kitchen, yeah. You still went suboptimal. <laughs> yeah, well you went double suboptimal, okay? And they need to remind you who won the race. I did! <laughs> <laughs> You're a menace to society. Now what? I, I'm a winner. I always win. Well, ask Alice, all right? I'm good at poker. She said it herself. Why do I think that when I ask her, she's just not going to care or remember? But ye of little faith. I'm just saying, you are the type to hold on to things. I don't think she is. I think it's so but it's good. Uh. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. It's gonna go. be years from now, and you're gonna be like, remember that time I beat you to the, the, the Gilded Collective? And I'll be so upset. 
<laughs> it was a win. I don't want to be proud. It wasn't a win. It was a false win. It was That's a win, win. Win. It was That's by the definition. Kind of win you should be ashamed of. Winners always win. No. <sighs> Which turn is it on again? I forgot. Well, I think Vincent's got it covered. Because it's off the main street. I thought it was like a t two turns ago. I was wrong. That's okay. It's very far. I guess winners don't always win. What do you mean? You're using that giving directions right I'm now. I'm not giving directions. I'm following Vincent. And we're here. Well, your memory is well, losing. I don't know. You both approach the house once more, with Vincent and Allison in tow. Allison glances at the guards, unimpressed. Are those the guards you were talking about? Mm-hmm. That's them. <laughs> she considers the house. Who is the person to have such vigilant bodyguards? The home doesn't look like anything special. It may belong to a very... Dangerous individual. Specifically an assassin. Oh, an assassin! Huh. I don't see why old an assassin would want to cause such a fuss in Erwin. Surely you don't think that Erwin and Olden are on good terms. <laughs> don't make me laugh. The kingdom of Olden hates Erwin, but enough to employ an assassin? Okay, that part isn't the point. We need a way to get past the guards in order to confirm if the house does belong to a dangerous assassin. In order to do that, we need you to convince them to let us through. I see. Well, don't worry about a thing, Miley. If there's anything I'm good at, it's pitching to potential clients. Clients. I just watch and learn. She giggles before <laughs> walking over to the guards. You all awkwardly duck behind a couple of crates. You watch Allison step forward to speak with the guards confidently. She tosses her hair over her shoulder and clears her throat. <clears> throat> Hello there, gentlemen. She says I to them. The guards glance at her curiously. I couldn't help but notice a couple of competent olden knights standing in front of this drab home. Oh no. What is she doing? Are we sure this was our only option? Maybe she has a plan. Don't you think it's unbecoming of our kingdom's stature to guard something so boring? Lucky for you, I happen to walk by. Lucky, huh? What exactly do you want, lady? I want to introduce you both to my wares, of course. As a renowned old and silk merchant, I have the ability to brighten up your day and to offer you a piece of my home with my tapestries and banners. Perhaps if you'd let me and my companies inside, I could spruce up the place and- We'll pass. The guard puts up a hand to cut Allison off. She blinks in surprise. Uh, what? We're not interested in buying any fabric, lady. Especially not from you. Oh, boy. Oh, what is that supposed to mean? Wait a minute. Aren't you that one merchant who had that really crappy corner saw in Olden uh, on the main street? Allison's uh, cheeks flush in embarrassment. Uh, uh, yeah, I do remember you. The other guard snaps his fingers at her. You had that really annoying bell that you rang at 7 a.m. every morning. Oh, who could forget the bell? It was so irritating. Some of us were trying to sleep, you know. Are you kidding me? Vincent hangs his head. Of course, you would know the most unlikable person in Olden. What makes you say that? You're friends with the Fixer. I'm not surprised. But what? Uh, hey! You turn back to the conflict between Allison and the guards. Why don't you scram, lady? We're not interested in your wares or whatever. I thought we got away from your stupid pitches when we left for Erwin, but here we are. Allison's face turns an even brighter shade of red as she clenches her fist. I... you... You have absolutely no class, then. Forget I said anything. 
In an instant, Lily starts to speed away from the home. What? Allison! Oh, there she goes. Oh. Allison! Come back! She's so fast! She walks so quickly in heels! Ah! <sighs> You rush after Allison as she walks away from the home. Hang on for a second, Allison. Where are you going? Back to the Gilded Collective, obviously. Nerve of those guards. They'll regret taunting me like that. I mean, did, did you seriously have a bell? It was to draw in customers! If that was its purpose, then maybe should we think your business strategies. And perhaps you should rethink your plan into the house. Uh, I'm done here. Wait, just give us a chance to talk about this, Allison! I have work to do elsewhere. Goodbye, Lily. Without any hesitation, Allison abandons you all on the busy street to return to the Gilded Collective. <sighs> well, that was a bust. Do we know anyone else from Olden who could help us? I guess... Penelope? Uh, no, but she's definitely not going to get us in if Allison couldn't. Who knew the people from Olden were so... rude? Even to people from their own kingdom! Lily tosses <sighs> her arms up in the air. I don't get it. I don't know. Kind of tracks with everything else you know about that place. Then I suppose that idea was a dud, too. <sighs> Dang it! What now? As much as I hate to say it... Desperate times may call for desperate measures. The prince brings a hand to his chin. And that means what exactly? Vincent's body tenses up as he considers his next words carefully. If we can't think of anything else, then since the sun's going down soon, we'll have to resort to less legal means. <gasps> Does that mean you want to break in? I don't want to do anything like that. Vincent crosses his arms. But I will do whatever it takes to defend London Remington. You're breaking in! Rex jabs a finger into his chest playfully. You're totally stooping to my level. <laughs> I never said anything of the sort. You put it that way, so we'll stick with what you said. Meaning it was all your idea, not mine. <laughs> sure it was. You can tell yourself that. So, how do we go about this? Carefully. I don't want anyone finding out about this for obvious reasons. The prince glances around the streets to ensure that no one is listening in on your conversation. When he doesn't notice anyone watching you, he nods further down the street. Come on, follow me. Wait, fill us in this time! Where are we going? Nah, and he's just going. I guess, I, so. I guess he's not. Well, you gonna explain? No, oh. okay, now he's going. He had to think. He, he was like processing and then leading. Ugh. Sorry about Allison. Oh man, the next time I see her, she's gonna be so upset with me. Penelope hates it's Olden fine. and Olden hates Penelope, so that one doesn't work either. Well, apparently Olden just hates Olden in general. Hmm. I don't have any other friends from Olden. Yeah. Does Olden like anyone? Vincent leads you both into the restaurant. The owner, Merlin, stands behind the host counter to seat the supper time patrons. Uh, what? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Got so confused. Okay. There's a table in the far right corner that's free. Would that be alright, or would you like a booth? That table's fine. Thank you. Uh, what are we doing here? This is how we'll sneak into that house. Let me talk to Merlin myself. Uh, all right. Miley hesitates, but she steps away to allow Vincent to speak with the owner. Vincent steps forward as Merlin finishes dealing with his patrons. When he notices the prince, he blinks in surprise. <clears throat> Uh, Prince Vincent Davenport. What a pleasant surprise, he says. Usually you and your family make reservations before visiting my restaurant. I'm not here for dinner, Merlin. 
Vincent states. On the contrary, I'm here to ask to take a look upstairs. May I ask why? I'm afraid that's classified, but rest assured my business here is quite important. One might even say it is for the safety of the city of Arrowin itself. Merlin clears his throat. <clears throat> well, I can hardly argue against that, can I? So you'll let us? I suppose so. The stairs to the second floor just past the door on the other side of the room. Try to enter discreetly and stay out of the kitchen, all right? You have our word, Vincent bows his head. Both of you, come with me. And Fixer, keep your hands to yourself. What? what? Hey! Why me, huh? No, no. He has a good point there. What? Ugh. Ooh, kitchen. Looks so yummy. Turkey. Don't touch. Don't touch. Uh, okay. Huh. Huh. This is a. a this attic needs generous. cleaning. Vincent looks around the floor carefully. Hmm. Should be around here somewhere. He mutters to himself. And what should that be? A prince glances back at you both. <clears throat> In order to get into the house without alerting the guards, we'll have to enter through the upper floor. Like, through the window? Yes, Fixer. You realize they can open, right? I don't where. <laughs> How does the second floor of the restaurant connect to the upper floor of that house? Aha! Vincent doesn't answer the question, as he finds a hatch in the ceiling. Here we are. Uh huh? Vincent jumps up and grabs at the string hanging from the left side of the hatch. He grasps it tightly and pulls it down, which releases the hatch and causes a ladder to fall before you all. The prince coughs and waves his hand over his face as a cloud of dust envelops your groove. <coughs> Looks like Merlin <coughs> hasn't used it since. <coughs> Never. What is that? A ladder up to the attic? Not quite, Vincent corrects. The ladder leads to the roof. Every building in Erwin has a secret hatch that accesses the rooftops. How else are repairs supposed to be safely made to the tops of the buildings? I didn't think about that. Interesting. From up there, we should be able to find a way across and into the second floor window. The prince informs you both. I recommend that you not fall. I'm not paying for your medical bills or for the repairs to the roof tiles if you break something. Uh, noted. <laughs> now then, after you. Don't mind if I do. Alright. I was gonna say after you and then go up first. Hmm? T show me where that makes sense. Alright. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa! Oh, I feel illegal. We should be careful. It's still pretty. Like, it is illegal, so let's try to be careful. Yes, I feel like a criminal. Why <sighs> are you so excited about that? <laughs> I had a dream about this once. No, you! Oh, this is awesome. Oh, this city's even cooler from the roofs. Can I do this more often? Wait, now that Vincent showed me that trick, I'm totally doing this more often. Do not. Do you think Merlin's just gonna let you do that? Casually? Who's gonna stop me? Ah! <sighs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is awesome. And dangerous. Oh, it's gonna Remember hurt if you fall. Here. Don't fall. Ugh. It's broad daylight. If someone sees you falling off from a roof, they're gonna ask questions. I'll have bigger really problems if I'm asked. falling off of a roof. I still consider that the number one problem. What a beautiful city. I always wanted to tiptoe across one of these. <laughs> oh, this is a building? And there's so. a window. Don't fall. He's so fun. <sighs> Nailed it. Nice. Oh. Huh. Okay. Ooh. It's a 
room in a house. There's um, a flower. Is that suspicious? No. Okay. There is a uh, terrarium. Is that suspicious? No. It has a fern inside. Do you think there's any connection? Fern. We're on no. something here. Okay. No. No. Dang it. It's downstairs. Stairs. You think these are suspicious? You were someone's legal counsel? <laughs> Come on. Okay, um... It's a book! There is a book. There's bookshelves! Hmm... There are many books on the bookshelves. What does it mean? Hey, maybe come take a look at this book. Huh? You pause and notice a rather fancy leather-bound book sitting on the table. You walk over to it. This looks important. I haven't found any clues that could tell us who lives here. Maybe this book could enlighten us. Mm, let's see what it has to say for itself. Lily reaches out and picks up the book. She flips through the pages and immediately frowns. Uh, is this? A picture book? You all stare at the pages in utter confusion. The book appears to have several childish illustrations connected to the narrative. You can't make out much of the story. Something about a monster hunter from another kingdom and his team of unlikely and immoral warriors trying to defeat a demon army? Does this mean anything to you, Vincent? Not everything is a clue, apparently. <sighs> this is just a normal picture book. Well, these drawings are actually pretty nice. Maybe our assassin enjoys children literature? Doubtful. <laughs> <sighs> just put the book back exactly where you found it. I don't want anyone to know we've been here. Okay, let's look for clues somewhere else. Hmm. Black couches. Maybe we ask olden people what their favorite color is. Yeah, okay, I thought Let's it was done too. There's a terrarium. This that, one has but... a um a swirly leaf. Let's keep moving. How do they do this in shows? They make it look so easy. It's scripted, <gasps> There's first food. of all. It, don't take the food. They can't know we were here. Man, I'm hungry. Do not touch the food. Never. I don't like cabbage anyway. Is that lettuce? I can't even... <gasps> no. It's a whole wedge of cheese. He's about to touch it. It's got holes in it. It's like holy cheese. It's been so long since I've seen cheese with holes in it. Normally they just have like the bricks now, and they're like bricks of cheese. This is like an actual like. Just some Swiss cheese at a later point in time. Why come does on. it come with? Why does it have holes in? It? I never understood that. This is cooked meat. It's cold. Well, yeah. Clearly, this person likes to leave their food out, which is strange for the record. There's a door here. Okay, you approach the closed door cautiously. Rex reaches out to open it, but Vincent grabs his wrist. Careful. We don't know if the assassin is home right now. <laughs> You'd think they would have heard us thumping around if they were. Besides, I don't hear anything past the door. Vincent opens his mouth to argue, but he doesn't find the words to say. He lets go of Rex's arm and sighs. <sighs> All right, fine then. Do what you want, but don't say I didn't warn you. Rex nods at him and turns back to the door. Slowly. Rex pulls the door open. Uh, an empty bathroom? You stare at the common bathroom casually. It's rather clean, although the tub's filled with fresh, bubbly water. Vincent narrows his eyes. Most people don't run a bath and then leave the house. Maybe this assassin isn't most people. There's so many bubbles! The bubbles are a choice. I guess they value relaxation. Close the door. 
they come back, they'll be looking to take that bath first. If there's anything wrong with the bathroom, then we're definitely in trouble. Mm, good point. Nyx pulls the door closed quietly and grins back at the others. I mean, hey, that's one room we can mark off the list. I suppose. Let's focus on the rest of the lower four before we move back upstairs. Mm, agreed. Alright, back at it. You notice a large chocolate cake on the table. Rex's eyes light up. Is that a cake? Seems like it. Ninsen observes the cake and then the state of the kitchen. Hmm. Well, given the lack of dishes, you could probably rule out the assassin being a baker. Rex kneels down to observe the decorations around the cake and the piping work. I feel like I've seen this exact kind of cake before. Suddenly, the memories flood back to him. Yeah! And I've seen it in Lawrence's bakery! So our potential assassin has a sweet tooth? Interesting to know. But it's nothing substantial. I mean, who doesn't like cake from Lawrence's bakery? Maybe if we don't find anything here, we could ask Lawrence who ordered a cake today and order a cake for ourselves. If we don't find anything, then there's no reason to ask Lawrence that question. Why would we investigate a cake order if we don't find any evidence in the actual house? Oh. Right. In that case, how about we just look somewhere else? I know you're trying your best, but maybe stop leading with your stomach. He won't be. He won't miss a slice. No, he will. He will. The thing is fully intact. You want to be like the, 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 that kid from Matilda? No, you don't. No, you don't. Come what? on. He ate a slice of cake, and then she made him eat the whole cake. You don't want to summon. All right, cake. my detective work is better. Red candle. Maybe their favorite color is red. The carpets. They have a red carpet, but they also have a black couch. We ask people, and if their favorite colors are black or red, we, we note them down. This is the equivalent of asking about cake orders. We still don't even know if there's anything wrong with this house. Okay, well, what about this room? We haven't checked it out yet. Close it behind us. It's a room. Looks like some sort of bedroom. Uh. Um. Maybe through this door? Uh, maybe. You all pause in front of the simple wardrobe. You immediately notice the ornate lock that seals the wardrobe shut. The padlock loops around a dark chair with chain, which holds both of the doors closed. What do we have here? Vincent questions. He reaches out towards the lock and holds it up in his hand. Quite the big lock to keep on a wardrobe, don't you think? Hmm. No one locks a wardrobe unless they're hiding something. My thoughts exactly, Fixer. Vincent agrees. He flips the lock to look on its underside. It appears only the key to open it. Or... Rex holds up his gauntlet and inserts his flux focus into the slot. We smash our way through it! Maybe we don't do that! Look, the owner, the owner of this home is definitely going to realize something is wrong if we break their lock. Exactly. Put the focus away. Aww. Nix frowns in disappointment. He removes the focus from his gauntlet and returns it to his pouch. A voice echoes in Lily's mind. Even if you did choose to use magic, it wouldn't work. Hmm? <clears throat> the metal of the lock and chain is mithril. I'm certain I don't have to explain why that makes the use of magic impossible. Oh. Lily thinks out loud as she brings her hand to her chin. Alright, and how else are we getting past the lock? It's one of the few things we haven't checked. Could lead to our first real clue. Agreed. We shouldn't be hasty. We still haven't investigated the other side of the room. We could find a key in one of the drawers. Or you could always pick the lock. Pick the lock? 
Mm hmm. Do you think you can do that, Miley? Miley goes yeah. red as the other two look at her expectantly. She waves her hands in front of her. Did I say that out loud? If you know how to pick a lock, now isn't the time to be humble. Well, I, I, I don't know how. I, I just... Do you want to learn? She turns away from Vincent and Rex to whisper at Vidim. How do you know how to pick locks? This doesn't seem like a skill that I've got. I ascended. Boom! That an ascended would have! I am the seeker of knowledge, Lily. Therefore, my skills are not limited by mortality. Lily considers his words before pausing. Hmm. You can really teach me? Lily? Are you okay? Uh, she perks up and looks back at the other two. Yeah, I'm good. I was just... She considers her answer. Uh, I can try to pick the lock for you guys. She grins at both of them happily. Viden sighs. I'll take that as a yes. He says to her. If you're sure, Rex shrugs. In that case, why don't we look at the drawers on the other side, Fixer? Vincent says. We can leave your friend to the lock. Fine with me. Just let us know if you need help, Lily. Mm-hmm. Will do. Okay. Let's see. More books. You and Vincent wander toward the other side of the room. You take a couple books off the shelves and glance at the titles. Whoever lives here has some... Interesting taste. Never even heard of some of these. They might be from older. I doubt the Kingdom of Origins the only reason why I don't know them. It's more likely they're so incredibly unpopular that no one reads them to begin with. He sighs as he stares at the books and sets them back on the shelves. But books aren't incriminating. So what else should we look at? Mm. Vincent walks over to a couple of drawers and opens them. Perhaps something on these spare sheets of paper. Vincent leans over and fishes the papers out. The size is small and rectangular, much like a pocket-sized notebook. Vincent flips through the pages and narrows his eyes. You look over his shoulder to gaze at the contents. Whoa, what the heck? This is all junk! The pages are covered in notes, but the notes make little sense. Every page is covered in random letters and numbers that don't spell anything substantial. A book of gibberish, Vincent raises an eyebrow. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm, maybe there's something wrong with her homeowner. Clearly, why would they keep something like this in their drawers? You reach forward and grab at the book to take it from Vincent. What? Hey, give it back, fixer! You ignore him as you flip through every page carefully, in search of something meaningful among the rubbish. Or... Maybe there's more to this book than meets the eye. You snap your fingers back at Vincent. Let's say this house was, did belong to someone suspicious. If I wanted to do something illegal, how would I hide it from random people who might come into my house? I wouldn't know. Vincent places his hands on his hips. I don't do illegal things, Rex. Well, I would try to cover it up and make it less obvious. Is this something you do often? I feel like I shouldn't answer that. I'm just saying that if I were a criminal, I wouldn't want to make my schemes easy to find. Even if I accidentally left it out in the open. Vincent considers your words and pauses. He glances back at the book. You mean like a... Cipher. I was gonna say invisible ink. What's a cipher? <sighs> Idiot. A cipher is like a code. It's a way of hiding your messages with secret ways of writing. So this weird gibberish could be a cipher. Precisely. We just have to decode it and figure out what the message really is. Alright. Hey, let's see what we have to work with. He's staring at the page for a long time. 
You blink in confusion. Yeah, I don't know how to read this. <sighs> Clearly, these letters must match up with different letters to create... Clearly, these letters must match up with different letters to create a sentence. Hmm. The N could refer to a vowel. Perhaps an A. You look back at the page and try to uncover what he said. What could connect the letter N with the letter A? And how does that pattern follow through the rest of the sentence? You start to envision the alphabet in your mind. And you place a second alphabet underneath it. If A is N, then that means B could be... Ah, I got it! You point at the letters. What if all the letters are just, letters are just shifted over? If you place N at the beginning of the alphabet, then all the letters become this. You start to read through the paper carefully. A total of five silver was transferred to the Silver Wings at the beginning of this week. Monday. Your eyes widen. Wait, what? Ensign puts a hand over his mouth. This isn't just a notebook. This, this is a checkbook, he says as he flips through a couple of the other pages. And the checkbook logs Payton's made to the Silver Wings at the beginning of every week for the past several weeks. <laughs> now that's incriminating! Quite incriminating. This is enough to imprison the homeowner. We found the perfect evidence then! High five! You hold up your hand and he just stares at you in confusion. You decide to not leave yourself hanging and high five yourself. Yeah. I don't know if I'd call it perfect, but it's a step in the right direction to keeping London safe. Let's keep looking for anything else we can find. We don't want to miss anything. Right. Lily? You good? You need to see this. What? 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 Come over here. You all stare into the closet in horror. Your eyes lock your gaze locks onto a particular crimson coat that hangs on the right side of the wardrobe facing outward. Rex's eyes widen. Is that a crimson cloak? Vincent asks. Yeah, and it looks pretty familiar. X begins to pace. I've seen the cloak before! That guy was wearing it when I met him, and then when I saw him with Blythe! Who are you talking about? Remember what I told you about Alvar, Lily? That's his cloak! So this house belongs to a cultist? But then why are there olden guards outside? Hang on. Alvar. Alvar has to be covering as someone else in the city. That's the only way you could have been able to give information to Blythe and stay here in Erwin. But, but who could he even be covering as? I Before Lila can finish her sentence, you hear the front door downstairs open. Rex jumps. <laughs> Crap! What do we do? Hide? Hide where? I don't know. Some are not obvious. You all begin to rush around the room like headless chickens as a conversation sounds from below. Two men begin to idly chatter with one another. Hopefully it's been an uneventful afternoon. Not much to report, sir. Good, good. If anyone comes to my door, just shoo them away. After everything, I could use a little me time. As you wish. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Footsteps stomp up the stairs, and the door to the bedroom opens gracefully. A familiar young man walks into the room, and locks eyes with you three. Conrad's face goes pale. Uh... Conrad? He notices you all standing in front of his open wardrobe, with the crimson robes on display. He cringes. Shoot. Without another word, he turns tail and rushes down the stairs to leave the house again. What? After him! Ah! Ah! Conrad! I know, it's surprising to go this way! Where'd he go? That way? 
You rush outside and pass by the two guards standing by the entrance. But, hey! Where did you people come from? Uh, where the heck did Conrad go? You whip your head around to search for him before eventually you spot him running down the main street towards the southern bridge. Over there! Vincent notices him sprinting away and groans. Ugh. Aren't there any members of the Aegean Vanguard around here? Why are we chasing him down without any backup? We really should have called for backup before going in there. Two idiots! Conrad shouts back at the guards at the entrance. They're on to us! Stop them now! You look behind you as the guards immediately draw their weapons against you. Ah, uh, shoot! Threat Riley pulls Vincent, out what a bow. We watch Conrad, you imbecile. We catch Conrad, you imbeciles. What? And the guards? If they lay a hand on us, they'll be under arrest too. They could consider themselves lucky that they're not a priority at the moment. Oh my god! A guard instantly swings his weapon at Vincent, who jumps back in alarm. <sighs> All right. Maybe I was wrong. We'll have to take them down while we chase their boss. Okay, let's just make this quick. Hopefully the vanguard shows up soon. Good. Don't it! No, I think I nailed him in the head. No, okay, okay, we need to keep going. Watch out for any more guards, though. Yeah, seriously. Come on, uh, there's, there's nothing uh, to see here. Go ahead, and watch out. No! Shooting on your left. Go! Ah! Keep going. We can't lose track of him! Crap, where'd he go? No, there he is! He's getting turned around! That's awesome! Ah! I got you! What? Careful! Alright, we need to keep going! He's running further! I know, you're right! Uh, why are there so many old and guards just crawling out of the shadows? You're right, Vincent! Keep knocking them out! Alright, keep going! Where'd he go? Left? Hmm. Uh, there, there, there! Hmm? This guy's running in circles! Crap, more oh, guards! He's kind of off guard here. Alright! This way! Come on! Where is he going? There's still civilians out here. Where is he? If he tries to get to the city gates. Ah! Uh. Uh, you round the corner and look around in confusion. Conrad is nowhere to be found. What? Where did he go? I, I don't know. We were just behind him. Right? I oh, this is just like Alvar. X tosses his arms up in irritation. That makes so much sense. What are you talking about, Fixer? First time I met Alvar, he escaped from being in prison because he just vanished into thin air. Conrad have the same abilities or something. That's why he could just disappear and hide from us in the middle of a chase. Does that kind of magic even exist? Probably. I saw Penelope teleport one time. The magic types are lost on me. Vincent massages his temples. If he did vanish, then how are we going to find him? Vyden scoffs in the back of Lily's mind. <laughs> vanish. Come on, Lily. No one can just disappear. Huh? Even when magic is used, disappearing without a trace is impossible. There is always going to be some evidence left behind. Rex and Vincent continue. You're the magic one, Fixer. Where could he have gone? Well, Penelope never taught me that kind of thing. I, I don't know how it works. Lily glances at the ground and narrows her eyes. We're sure that Conrad rounded this corner, right? Yeah, I was on him. Then he turned the corner and poof, gone. <laughs> well, lucky for us, no one goes poof without leaving evidence behind. What's that supposed to mean? Look at this. There's a black mark in the ground here. Vincent walks over to her and gracefully lowers himself to the ground to observe the spot. It looks like a skid mark, perhaps. Exactly. He must have tried to stop himself around here after he rounded the corner. Uh, and then what? And then... I don't know. If he used magic, why would he need to bring himself to a complete stop? Good point. You can use magic while you're running. 
Unless he skidded on accident. Maybe he almost tripped? There has to be something we're still missing. Lily takes a step back to observe her surroundings. To the left is the canal, and directly in front of you all is the pathway to the bank. To your right is a building with several wooden planks nailed over the doors. However, Lily notices something strange about one of the planks. The nail has been pulled out of the side and sits on the ground, which causes the plank to lean away from the door. Hey, come look at this. Lily walks over to the door and quickly shoves the plank aside. It looks like someone moved these planks. Vincent's eyes widen. It's just weird, the store slightly ajar. Rex tries to piece everything together before he eventually gasps. <gasps> hey, that seems pretty intentional if you ask me. No kidding. Come on, let's take a look inside. Watch your step. This place looks like it's under construction. It means it may not be entirely stable. Make sure you don't cause the entire thing to collapse on us. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Whoa. Whoa. Big building. Yeah, mm. no kidding. There! <gasps> it's you! Conrad whips his head back to face you all. No, oh, come on! How the heck did you find me? You're smart enough to know that people who disappear always leave a trace. It's over, Conrad. Confess. Confess to what? I'm an upstanding citizen, and you're the ones chasing me for no reason. You shouted at your thugs to attack us. I felt threatened! You were just mad that you got caught. <laughs> Conrad narrows his eyes. Bold words, Arrowhin. Bold words indeed. Before you can react, Conrad flicks his arm, specifically the arm wearing his gauntlet. The nails at the end of the gauntlet grow and sharpen to appear far more menacing. But let the record show, you gave chase first. This is all in self-defense. He's got a weapon! That's right! And I know how to use it, too! You can't hold me here. You don't have the authority for that. Authority? Is that what you think? Tch. Vincent draws his weapon and points it at Conrad. Have it your way. If it's a fight you want, then it's a fight you'll get! Get ready, guys! Oh, jeez! Oh. I never oh. thought I'd be fighting this guy! I thought it was just a normal kind of jerk! But no, he's an advanced jerk! Uh. Yeah! That's right, set him on fire! Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah! Uh. On how you like us now, huh? Ow! Ow, yeah, sorry! Well, he's running upstairs! Conrad runs up the stairs quickly to escape your blows. After him! Lily shouts. She points her towards she points her bow towards the man as he runs and fires a flurry of arrows in his direction. However, he ducks underneath all of them. Where is he going? Conrad laughs. <laughs> it's over, travelers! I have the high ground! As you move towards the stairs to run after him, he starts to pick up an object from the ground. He throws the object at you aggressively. A hammer? Da, look out! Da, this is destruction of property! Vincent comments. Property is the least of our worries here. Da! Whoa. Da, he's throwing hammers at me! Understood! Watch out for the hammers! Ah. Wait, he's throwing hammers at us! So fast. How about I throw them back? Whoa! <laughs> hammers! Ah. Yeah! I did not have a bad idea! I'm ah, ah, sorry! It's okay. These hammers are kinda hard to throw! Yeah! Ah. Knock him down! No, he uses his own him. hammers ah. against him! It's a gods ball, but like way more painful! Connor jumps back down as he realizes that his attempts to keep you away were unsuccessful. Uh, this isn't fair, you know! 
Three people against one? What kind of advantage is that? The kind that'll get you locked up for good. Lock me up? Then I'd like to see you try, he says. He glances at each of you carefully. I think it's about time we even the playing fields. He rushes forward and reaches towards Lily. He grabs her bow and yanks it out of her hands aggressively. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Give that back! No way! Conrad sticks his tongue out. You've been shooting at me this whole time! How about a taste of your own medicine? Uh, we'll see about that. I still have your hammers. Oh, he's a bow! He's armed! Uh. <laughs> he shot a arrow. Well, clearly he's really bad at it. Yeah, okay, he's really bad with it. What? Come on, dude. I, I, what? That wasn't even aiming at anyone. Dude, is that how you shoot? <laughs> Come on. Ah. Oh, Conrad complains. What's your secret? How do you use this thing? He pulls at the drawstring haphazardly. Oh, I don't get it. I can't land anything with this stupid bow. He tosses it aside in a fit of anger. His gaze slowly focuses on Rex, and he begins to grin once more. Like the bow didn't work. And why don't I try that? Rex! Look out! Before Rex has a chance to react, Conrad brushes by him and slips his gauntlet off of his arm. Oh, come on, man! Rex whips around to glare at him. How'd you do that? Watch the hands next time, Dread. Conrad pulls Rex's gauntlet onto his arm. Without your precious magic, you won't be able to lob those pesky fire spells at me. Instead, I'll be the one to set you ablaze! Conrad flicks his wrist towards you, and instead of fires blasting from the focus at you, the fires creep up his arm and set him on fire instead. Ah! Hot, hot, hot! Help me, help me, help me, help me! Yeesh! Been there, buddy. Not fun, is it? No, it's not! Put me out! Conrad demands. He drops to his knees and starts to roll across the floor to smother the flames. In his struggle, the gauntlet falls off of his arm and again and tumbles before Rex's feet. He quickly picks it up and puts it on as Conrad recovers from the fire. Vincent snorts at the man's display. <laughs> Fixer, why don't you give him back the gauntlet? Who could have guessed that he could do our job better than you could? Are you kidding me? Conrad snaps his head toward Vincent. Hey man, I'm doing my best here. Conrad lunges up from the ground and stumbles past Vincent in anger. He snatches the rapier away from him. Ha! <laughs> Who's laughing now? Vincent goes red in the face. Uh, that is made from the most pristine metal and heroin. Return it this instant. It's mine now, Conrad says. You might be a prince, but I don't got an answer to you. Let's see what a royal's weapon could do. Oh, great. He's got a sword! Yeah, I'm and Vincent has no weapon! Uh, I feel like this was more intimidating when Vincent used this thing! Uh, you're not nearly as light on your feet as he is. Uh, take him down! Come on! That was bad aim, Vincent. He's just I'm running! Sorry. Just stop running! You're finished! Uh. Hammer! Run! Hammer! Yeah! I think he's done. No? What? He's running? What is he? And now he's cowering. Yeah! Conrad stumbles back and falls against a nearby log of wood. Vincent's rapier flies out of his hand. Vincent quickly catches it and picks it up to return it to its sheath. Conrad grunts in pain and pants as he wipes sweat from his brow. End of the line, Vincent scowls at him. Wait! The man groans. Ugh. Please spare me. I swear I haven't done anything to merit this. I'm an upstanding citizen. Upstanding? Really? I don't understand why you're doing any of this. He puts on an innocent expression. Please, don't you have an ounce of pity in you? Man, don't act like you're guilt-free. We know who you really are, Conrad. We found your red cloak in your house. You're Alvar, a member of the Alacrim Edict. 
Conrad places a hand on his heart. I've never heard of that name in my life. Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. Vincent steps forward. Hang on. That's completely ridiculous. I read your file back at the courthouse today, and according to your legal documentation, your full name is Conrad Alvar. Conrad goes pale. Right. That is my name. Wait, seriously? Alvar is your actual last name! Conrad opens his mouth to argue. But when you say it like that, it sounds stupid. It is stupid, Vincent argues. It's idiotic! Well, just because you found that cloak and know my last name, that doesn't prove a thing. He crosses his arms stubbornly. I don't know. I, I think it proves a lot. You have no proof that I have any connections with the Lacrim Edict at all. I hate magic. I saw you talking to Blythe in the middle of the woods. You're a big, phony hypocrite. That's your word against mine, Dread. He sticks his tongue out. Just like it's your word against ours when we say that you're working with the Silver Wings? Oh yeah, that too. Now it seems like you're pinning all your problems on me, Erwin. You're the one causing all the problems around this city. You went out of your way to incite a rebellion in the Vanguard. And you made people turn against the mages in Aurora Alley. Rex jabs a finger at the man. You have nothing against me, except for some weak circumstantial evidence. You can't say definitively that I'm the one. You can't definitively say I'm working with the Edict, or that I have anything to do with the Silverlings. Silver wings? Don't act dumb. Fine, whatever. Conrad waves an arm. Silver wings, then. I have nothing to do with them. Then how do you explain the? <clears throat> then how do you explain this? Rex takes out the checkbook that he and Vincent found. Conrad sweats as he stares at the page. Vincent clears his throat. <clears> throat> He found this checkbook in your house as well. It contains proof that you've been paying the Silver Wings to cause trouble around Erwin. Aha! Checkbook and checkmate, Conrad! <laughs> you see, you've got that entirely wrong. That's just my gibberish book, where I write random letters and sequences for fun. Rex blinks it in. Dude, no one does that. Stop lying, we already discoded the cipher. Conrad frowns at this information. Shoot. Is that a confession then? Nope! He points at you all. Nice try, but that's not a confession! I didn't confess to anything! You still have nothing you can hold against me! Really? We have everything against you! The Golem Tournament? Taking Geo's Mithril Core? Causing issues in Aurora Alley? I don't know, riling up the guards? You're obviously the one behind all of those problems. Everything comes back to you. It's all just to cover up the fact that you're going to kill London Remington. Conrad leans back at this news. What? Me? <laughs> no, 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 you're very wrong there. I can never get my own hands dirty. You all look at one another before glancing back at him. But, you do know about it. The plot against London. Conrad realizes his mistake and curses under his breath. Crap. Now we've really got you this time. No, just, just shut up! Conrad tries to bargain with you all. Keep your voices down! Why? Are you embarrassed that you gave yourself away? No, I don't want anyone to overhear our conversation. If she found out that I got made... You all pause at this statement. She? Who is she? I can't tell you that. Stop lying! Vincent grits his teeth. If you waste any more of our time, I swear- I'm not lying, okay? I really can't tell you! I'm already in it deep because of you three! If I spill any more information, I'm about as dead as that priestess! What are you so afraid of? Conrad opens his mouth to talk, but he hesitates. Eventually, he groans, and he hangs his head. <sighs> All right. Look. I can't say much, but I can give you some information in exchange for something else. What do you want? Riley asks. Vincent casts her an annoyed look for a split second, but he turns back to Conrad as the man continues. 
I want you to put me in the deepest and darkest cell you can find in the city of yours. What? Why would you want that? Because if I give you this information, that is the only place where I will keep me safe from her. A chill runs down your spine at his statement. Vincent's jaw tightens. I don't trust this. What's your game? Is protection really all that you're after? That's it? Look, you already caught me red-handed. There's not much else for me to do. You've annoyingly covered your bases. But I'm not too keen on dying because you decided to get clever. I wouldn't say we were clever. You were just sloppy. Do you want the information or not? It's in size. <sighs> Fine. I can see what I can do to arrange that. After all, London's safety comes first. The prince steps forward. So start talking, you self-serving rat. If you're not the one behind all of this, then who is? Who is the assassin that wants to kill London Remington? Conrad opens his mouth to speak. <laughs> oh. Tell me, Arrow and Dogs, have you heard of Sweet Esmeralda? Who? Get to the point, Conrad. What does that have to do with any of this? I'll take that as a no. In that case, why don't I tell you a little olden bedtime story? Sweet Esmeralda is the perfect young woman. She can do it all. She can sing, she can dance, she can play the piano. She brings life to every party she attends. She's the most wonderful company a nobleman could ask for. But she has a dark, dark secret. She just so happens to be the most deadly assassin in all of Olden. Perfectly raised, perfectly trained, with grace, elegance, and lethal precision, she's the Grim Reaper. The Collector of Souls. She's the story we tell the children of Olden. If they misbehave, well then, sweet Esmeralda will come for them and take them away. Never to be heard from again. There's your assassin, Erwin. <laughs> Only the best from our kingdom to yours. You stare at the man, horrified of the story he just told. That's a bedtime story to you? Who's messed up? Vincent clenches his fists. So, this sweet Esmeralda. That's your assassin. That's correct. Who is she really? Conrad shrugs. I'm afraid that information's classified. CLASSIFIED! Your assassin's going to kill one of our priestesses, and you're telling me the name is CLASSIFIED?! Vincent storms over to him and grabs him by the collar. Whoa, Vincent! Chill, we can figure this out. Marx is right, we have to stay calm. Vincent scoffs at the both of you, but he lets go of Conrad. Fine, then. If you won't give us a name, and why don't you tell us who your connection in the chapel is? Connection? We know that a priestess is working with you and sweet Esmeralda. Which one is it? <laughs> oh, once again, you're far off the mark there. What do you mean? Esmeralda isn't just the assassin. She's a professional. And Esmeralda could be anyone that she needs to be. The man grins at you all. <laughs> I'd wager she's in that church as we speak. As 
one of your very own priestesses. Your eyes widen at the news. Esmeralda is a priestess. Wait, that means you were the one in the confessional. X points at him. When I went to talk to Reyna, you came into the other confessional to talk to Esmeralda. And you caught me at the worst time. Don't remind me, I already got an earful about that night. Tell us a name. Which priestess is Esmeralda? Conrad shakes his head quickly. I'm not telling you that. Why not? If I tell you that name, there won't be a cell or a hiding place. You could keep me where she won't find me. I've told you enough as it is. I'm lucky to still be alive. I'm the real victim here. Weird. You seem like an accomplice to me. I'm only telling you this much because on the off chance you manage to stop her, she won't be able to get to me. <laughs> so you're really in it for yourself. Like I said, he's a self-serving rat. Instant rolls his eyes. Maybe I am. But if you fail, and you will, I want to be in the most secluded location you have, so she will never find me. That's the only reason I'm still talking to you. The man turns away from you. But that's all I had to say. My lips are now sealed. Hey, we still have questions. The man shakes his head. End of the line, travelers and prince. <laughs> for you and for me. His jaw tightens. If you continue to go after this, then we all go down. <laughs> I bet you're all dumb enough to do that. I'm not. Yeah, well, you've been pretty dumb up to this point. Then looks like I'm turning over a new leaf. You could learn a thing or two from me. Unlikely. Come on! Just give us the name! We can protect you from this assassin and grant you some kind of immunity if you tell us. You're no match for her. We'll do whatever we can to stop her, and that means you'll stay alive! Isn't that what you want? <laughs> Obviously. But I'm not an idiot. I know a winning team when I see one. Why else do you think I wear so many masks? He motions to himself. I'll use whatever power I have at my disposal to come out on top, regardless of who I'm working with. Esmeralda or not, I did my job the best way I knew how, by playing on every team. Is that how you justify working with the Edict? <laughs> You're such a coward. Maybe I am, but I'm a coward who knows how to play the long con. Now it's game over. Yeah, that's right. Rex sticks his tongue out at the man. Seems to me like you chose the wrong side. Sucks to suck. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Why wouldn't we be? You're the one under arrest. You're so confident because you caught me. But do you really think you'll be able to handle Esmeralda? Vincent hesitates. He doesn't answer, but his confident expression falters. Conrad continues. You can't, he assures you both. And do you want to know how I know that? It's not just because she's superior to all of you combined. He shakes his head. No, it's because you can't even stop the Alacrim Edict from wrecking havoc in your territory. What are you talking about? Ali steps forward. We've stopped the Edict plenty of times. We've chased Blythe out of Erwin more than twice already. Oh, Erwin isn't the problem this time. Lila's expression darkens. What are you talking about? The man doesn't respond. Lily grabs him by the collar aggressively and winds her fist back. I said answer me! What are you talking about? Whoa, Lily! Vex steps forward and gently grabs Lily's arm. She doesn't throw a punch and glares at Conrad. As Rex pulls Lily away from the man, Vincent walks forward. Talk! Or you can kiss that cell of yours goodbye. You wouldn't. Try me. I may have caused a bit of trouble before returning to the city. Or should I say, Alvar did. He glances towards the barricaded doors that looks out into Arrowin streets. I had a conversation with Blythe about her next course of action. It seems like everything... 
She has everything all figured out for herself. What is she planning? Where is Blythe? Just outside of Erwin, there's a small village that's in danger of being destroyed. What? Alvar informed Blythe that her precious light presence would be in that village if she caused enough chaos. She's convinced that an attack will make her target appear. And she's eager to not disappoint our lady. You're despicable. No, oh, please. He rolls his eyes. I'm just doing my job. Same as the rest of you. A man continues. But that being said, good luck trying to solve all your problems at once, Erwin. A number of guards enter the room as he smiles at you all confidently. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to hack it. I look forward to hearing all about it from my prison cell. Vincent glares at him and doesn't respond. Prince Vincent! A guard shouts at your party. We heard that you were in need of assistance! Took you long enough. <laughs> I want this man arrested for disturbing the peace of Arrowin and for conspiracy with kingdom-wide threats. Yes, my prince. The guards salute him. You watch the guards pull Conrad to his feet and cuff his hands behind his back. They escort him out of the room. Vincent steps aside to talk with one of the guards and inform him of their bargain, while you both just stare at one another in shock. A professional old and assassin. Why? Why her? If Conrad is willing to do whatever it takes. What is that assassin willing to do? Why London? What about that town? They don't have much protection. Blythe All is of those towns dangerous. out there, they have nothing. You should have seen her on the bridge the other day. He doesn't care about anything. And he gets a cushy prison cell? No, he deserves worse. And someone needs to help that town. Ah. The London's still in danger, too. I can't do anything at once. That's what he wanted. He wanted multiple problems. Must have been part of their plan from the beginning. Causes many issues so that just nothing could happen. I mean, we've been seeing it for... A while now. All these problems, people being spread too thin. I bet Conrad's trying to make us make a choice right now. The life of one or the lives of many. You both walk over to Vincent as he dismisses a couple of the guards to escort Conrad away. He massages the bridge of his nose as he turns to you both. Hmm. <laughs> well, that should settle it. Conrad Alvar will be imprisoned in Hydra's castle. All right. Even if he's only looking for protection at this point, it's what he deserves. What do we do now? Now, Vincent considers the question. There's nothing we can do. What? What are you talking about? This is more serious than we thought. We're not looking at some second-rate killer for hire. We're talking about a trained, olden assassin. But that just means we'll have to be more careful. Careful. Are you seriously telling me your only plan to deal with someone of this caliber is to be more careful? Well, we've seen them once. Elsa and I took them on, too. And you barely survived. 
The only reason you're still here is because your friend set fire to a building and got the attention of the Vanguard. <sighs> if Conrad is right about Esmeralda, then this is even more dangerous than we thought. Especially for the people investigating everything. He glances between Rex and Lily. So you mean it's more dangerous for us? You don't have to worry about us. We're travelers, remember? We're a lot more destructible than we look. Then what about London? <laughs> we'll protect her! Rex motions between himself and Vincent. Just like we've been doing. She's not as indestructible as you are. We don't have many choices in this matter. The only thing we can do is remove her from the equation ourselves. What do you mean by that? We need to get her out of Erwin. What? That's not fair! She's not safe in this city! Not with this assassin on the loose! We don't know which priestess they're disguised as, and given Conrad's arrest, it's only a matter of time before they realize that they don't have an ally on their side anymore. They're going to get desperate. No, no, look, there has to be another way. There isn't. Instant cuts him off. I'm not letting you endanger her again with your stubbornness, Rex. The prince grits his teeth angrily. Do you understand me? I will do whatever is necessary to keep London Remington safe. But why does she have to leave? It's not fair! This is her home! Why don't we just think about this for a second, Vincent? If you refuse to be reasonable, then there's nothing left to talk about. Vincent barks. Without another word, he storms away. But, but Vincent! Rex starts to go after him. But he glances back towards Lily skeptically. The, 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 Lily. Just go, Rex. It's fine. I understand. This is more important. Are you, are you sure you'll be okay? I'm sure. Good luck with him. I should get back home as it is. I want to be there for her. Then do it. I hope you can figure out something for that town. I don't think I can leave her, though. Good luck. Vincent! Vincent! You chase after Vincent quickly. Man, slow down! We can talk about this! There's nothing left to talk about, Rex. I have business to attend to. What the that business is going to ruin London's life! No, it's going to save her life! Unlike you! You're taken aback by his statement, and pause. But... Uh, I thought you said we were in this together. We were. But now I realize that this is getting too dangerous. What's that supposed to mean? You motion to yourself. I found important information! I figured out where the assassin was from, and I fought them myself! You don't get it. This is beyond you or me. If I don't navigate this situation carefully, London could be in serious trouble. If you don't? Are you kidding me? Do I look like I'm joking? He grits his teeth. <laughs> of course, you still can't see things from my perspective, Fixer. What's our plan, huh? Storm into the cathedral until we figure out exactly which priestess is after London? I don't know! Maybe! That's a bad idea, and you know it. What's important right now is getting those priestesses away from London. <laughs> that's, that's such crap! Listen to me. London Remington deserves a fighting chance. I don't care what it takes to ensure it, but I'm not going to be the reason she's hurt. And I know you don't want to be either. He steps back. Look, there's still a chance we can catch the assassin. Can you just trust me for once? Can't you understand that I want what's best for her too? You open your mouth to speak. But the words get lost in your throat. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Vincent turns away. We will get to the bottom of this. And if not, then we will do whatever it takes to keep London Remington safe. 
even if that means sending her away. Without another word, Vincent locks away. Uh, I can walk myself, you know. Sheesh. Hey, keep it moving. Fine. You're sure you'll take me to the most secure cell you've got, right? <laughs> <laughs> 